just a really, really pretty boat. This is very impressive. All right, so I'm standing forward of the galley here and I was scratching my head this whole time because I knew the engine had to be under this right here, but I couldn't figure out how to access it. And then I did this. What's up everyone? Today I've got for you just a really solid and classic yet modern 45 foot cruiser in amazing condition. She's got a very practical layout down below to be a comfortable liveaboard with a trick up her sleeve that you'll have to watch to the end to see. As always, if you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to keep these tours coming. It's the best way to support this type of content. So thank you in advance and without further ado, here's the tour. All right, guys, I just stepped aboard and we're going to go forward first. As always, first thing I notice is this beautiful teak deck in really good shape. Look at that, guys. I like it. And it looks to be glued and not screwed, so not a ton of screws going through the deck. So that's that's always a good sign. Very nice. Continuing forward, just generally a very clean deck. It's just not cluttered. It looks like you got everything you need and nothing you don't. You got ventilation. Inboard shrouds, they're gonna obstruct the way forward a little bit, but you do have handholds going, going forward, running backstay, and then our mast right here. We'll get a better look at that in a little bit. Let's continue forward. You kind of have to step up onto the coach roof but then once you're up here you've got the stays to hold on to and a pretty clean coach roof deck up here and then coming back down onto the side deck you've got high bulwarks I like that and then again a pretty clean foredeck with a very large Samson post right there and a large horizontal windlass and two lockers up here or your your anchor chain foot controls for the windlass let's go ahead and continue forward all the way onto the bow sprit look at this massive teak bow sprit right here very very cool roller furling head sail dual bow rollers oversized bow rollers really and then an oversized stainless bow pulpit that looks to be inch and a half stainless there is a chain plate right here for an inner stay for a stay sole. I like that a lot and looking aft just a really really pretty boat very clean very classic I do like the teak on this boat a lot I think it looks great door aids for ventilation down below stainless lifelines pretty high could be a little bit higher but pretty high nonetheless and continuing aft going aft it would be nice to see this handhold going all the way but this is sufficient you got bronze port lights I like that and then looking up the mast triple spreader cutter rigged really but the inner stays not on the boat stack pack with lazy jacks slab reef main and it looks like most if not all lines go to the cockpit nice big butterfly hatch under that cover and a dodger back there You could stay on the side deck and kind of go around the stays. That's what I'm doing now, but it's a little bit easier to just step up and then step back down. You've got two head sail tracks on each side for your Genoa jib and or staysail and big midship Samson posts. So that's good. Continuing aft. This Dodger has a flip up cover, so I kind of just flipped it up, so that's kind of cool. For the vinyl there. And then after all that, we've got five, six, seven very large 
self-tailing winches. And then a nice big cockpit with cutouts for the wheel. So nice big wheel so you can sit on the combing and sail the boat. Very nice. Or you can sail it from, from back here. Got a hydraulic backstay and a stainless ladder to go off the transom there, a barbecue, and then a spot for your, your dinghy motor there. Overall, pretty decent cockpit, nice and safe, deep. And it looks to be like there's a good amount of storage here. You do need a winch handle to open up these. This one you don't, so I'm opening it up. And that is the propane and gas locker. So that was the propane and gas locker vented off the back. Then if I can find a winch handle, I'll open up some of this stuff, but I do not, do not see one right now. All right, and now we're at the helm right here. Good visibility from the helm. You know, you can see everything you need very clearly and through the Dodger. And like I said earlier, you can sit on the combing and sail, or you can sit right here or stand right here, and then you've got your chart blotter here and wind instruments above the companionway. So pretty standard setup. I do like to see all of these very large oversized winches back here. That is it's gonna be very helpful. And then Samson posts as well, rather than cleats. So a lot of the a lot of the hardware on this boat is oversized, which is good. Very nice. Bags for all of your, your sheets here. And there's the winch handle. So, in order to open these lockers, it looks like we need to, interesting. I have not seen that that yet in a boat. So you need a winch handle to open up the lockers, but you got a pretty big locker right here. I'll be honest, I'm not sure that I like the winch handle opening mechanism because it's it's a little awkward to do. I suppose if you had a locking winch handle, this is not a locking one, it would be a little bit easier. But that's going to be, again, just access to the that aft locker right there for the steering and, and everything. But pretty cool. Let's go ahead and look at the chain locker now that I have a winch handle real quick. So yeah, so chain locker up here. And another locker for Anchor Road, it looks like, snubbers, that kind of thing. All right, let's go return this winch handle. And I think that's it. Let's go ahead and go down below. And I just noticed anchor points for your harness, but let's go inside. Stepping down below. This is very impressive. Everything seems like it's in really good shape, really good quality, and very spacious down here, very beamy. This is a huge galley. Turn it aft, looks like there is an aft cabin, as well as a full head with a separate shower, but we're gonna Go forward first as always. So walking forward past the forward facing nav station and through the very spacious main salon. We're heading into the forward cabin, which is a V berth, but it's also a very large forward cabin. This looks to be the main cabin and it's very spacious in here. Mainly because you've got this room that I'm standing in right here with all of this storage for whatever you need. Tons of drawers down here for clothes as well. And then 
on the other side. That closes for privacy and now we're up here in the forward cabin and there's a massive hanging locker on the starboard side. Huge, huge hanging locker. So just a really good and livable space even though you know you might consider this a V berth this is more of a large forward cabin in my opinion anchor locker up there a little seat that can also come up and complete the double berth here so this is a really nice space i like it nice and private spacious good for two people good amount of natural light as well and Let's go ahead and go aft. That door has a latch that holds it in place. Look at this bulkhead, guys. So all the woodwork in this boat is in really good shape. Very well taken care of. And moving aft. Now we are in the main salon. We've got a U-shaped main settee and a salon table that looks like it can fold down or fold up, which is really nice, depending on what you want. Storage behind all of that there. Air conditioning vent there, bookshelf, and there's gonna be storage down below, as well as equipment down below the settee. And then turning to starboard, there's a single long settee here that can also be a pilot berth and I forgot to mention I believe this can become a big double berth as well. TV, storage behind, storage behind the cushions and storage below just everywhere. Everywhere you look there's storage. I am curious about the cabin sole. It does look like it comes up, but in big pieces. And, you know, it doesn't look like there's a latch that you can easily pull it up. And continuing aft on the starboard side here is the forward facing nav station. So very nice. I like it. Looks comfortable. Good place for your electrical and instrument hub on the boat, as well as pretty much your office. It's a good place to set up a laptop and get some work done as well as navigate from. So very nice. And turning to port, this is probably my favorite part of the boat. Look at this galley, huge galley. I mean, it takes up a ton of space down here, but that's a good thing. If you are a liveaboard cruiser, you know that galley space is important. Galley storage is important and also having a galley that you can brace yourself in during a passage. So this has all of that sink right there, gimbaled stove. Storage abound. Even a little microwave hidden away. Equipment access under the fridge and cold storage here. Very nice. And then turning aft, you know, we've got our companionway stairs right there, and then directly to starboard of that is the large single head in this boat. Good design. I think having only a single head in a boat this size is a good idea because you can make it a nice big one. And, you know, unless you're a huge family, most cruisers really only need one head. This has a nice separate shower. I like that a lot. And it's very spacious with a lot of storage and a sink back there behind the door. Very nice. Coming out of the head, there's the galley again, and then directly aft of the galley is the aft cabin. So another good sized cabin, not as big as the forward cabin and not as much storage. This one is under the cockpit, so there's a little, you know, less space to sit up, though you could sit up, you know, there if you'd like. And there's also a place to sit here. So for us, this would be the kids room or the guest room if you're a couple. 
hanging locker with a little little vanity right there. I like it. This is interesting. So the generator access is under the stairs here. Definitely thought that that was going to be an engine, but nope, it's a generator. So looks like to me, the engine is going to be right here. So let's see if we can access that. Nope. All right, so I'm standing forward of the galley here and I was scratching my head this whole time because I knew the engine had to be under this right here, but I couldn't figure out how to access it. And then I did this. Wow. So there you have it. <laughs> the Yanmar diesel engine in the, you know, the middle of the cabin here with full access all the way around so very nice I can't complain about that and that entire island being on a gas strut like that is really slick very cool all right guys it's time for the full continuous below decks walkthrough from bow to stern So what did you think? Personally, I believe this boat would be a great cruiser for a couple or small family looking for a beautiful, comfortable, and ready to sail monohull in the 200 to 300K price range. As with all of our videos, the current asking price along with the broker contact information will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Remember to do all the usual things and I'll see you in the next one. I've got it right and I got it wrong, but I learned my lesson hanging on. Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a